it's been a while since we've heard heard from you. There was um, you recently released a video, sort of highlighting um, the timeline of your career, and you mentioned in the video, mm. how you sort of fell out of love with music. Yeah. What, what sort of drew you back into into making music? What sort of drew you back into the art form? Because it's it's meant for you. It's it's for you. So we're yeah. We're wondering Honest, where. Yeah. Man, honestly, it was Drake. I did. Um, he invited me last summer. Not this summer that just passed, the summer before that. He threw this big show that kicked off his OVO weekend here in Toronto. And he invited me and he was he was like, yo, man, I want you to come and perform. You know, it's like all Canadian artists, I really want you to be there. So I was like, yeah, for sure, I'll do it, no problem. But this is already, I've been on, I was, I call it retired. I was retired for like seven years at this point. Hmm. And um, so I'm thinking, yeah, I'm just going to do this show. Then I'm going to come back to my couch and be retired again. And so I do the show and the place like goes mental. Like the energy went from like here to like here. You, you ask anybody that was at that show, right? And so I hop off stage and Drake comes bolting into the room and grabs me and pulls me aside. And he's like, yo, what is happening? Like, what are you doing? And I was like, dude, honestly, I'm done. Like I lost my love for the for music, which sucks because it was the music business that made me lose my love for it. And he's like, yeah, 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 that's, I get that. And that happens. He's like, but did you hear those people? He's like, they love you, bro. Like those songs, they live forever. They're still going on. Sean Desmond, you need to make, trust me, you need to start making music again. And I was like, holy shit. Like, I guess I really gotta, I gotta think about this. And like, even when we got in the car that night, cause I had my whole family at that show with me and my wife turned and she said, babe, I don't think you understand what you did in that room tonight. And I was like, really? She's like, there's something happening. She's like, I just feel it, like something's happening. And since then, I got in the studio, started making music, released Maniac, and it was like my first top 10 record in over to probably over 10 years. Right. And then it's funny because then Drake hit me, hit me up after and sent me this long, amazing like voice message. And you just, just was like, dude, I'm so proud of you. And like, I'm so happy that you listened to me that night and you didn't just let what happened on that stage fizzle you know um so which was really really cool and it, i'm just i'm happy to know like i guess like at some point i i inspired drake to do what he's doing you know what i mean um so yeah that's that's kind of what got me back into it and now i've gotten the i have the bug again right so i'm just gonna ride this wave as long as i can and what's so cool is my kids my kids get to experience this with me now you know like where before they were so young they didn't get it but like now we go places and it's funny my daughter's nine and she notices everything and she's like dad 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 and i'm like yes i hear them sienna <laughs> I <laughs> like, love it. it's it's like it's so cool and they love it it's it's nice to be able to share this with them i would imagine and i i think sometimes it takes sort of an outside perspective to sort of realize 100 percent and that's why so sort of having your family having drake of all people to sort of give you that push and i think the fans are so thankful that happened because we're we're beyond sort of excited to see you back in action because sean desmond is so ingrained in, in canadian pop culture spe specifically so it's a huge moment so i i think you should yeah. be proud. i uh the fans are definitely proud for sure speaking speaking of your family i three gorgeous kids beautiful wife i was wondering What's your, what's sort of your approach to making music now, sort of that you're a family man versus when you first started making music in the 2000s? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely not gonna write about girls in the club and popping bottles and all that <laughs> stuff. Not, that's not my life anymore. Um, you know, I honestly approach every session with like, I wanna make people feel good. Like I want them to hear a song and it makes them dance. It just makes them feel a certain way or maybe it brings them back to a particular moment in their life just something and like honestly real life experiences um you know beautiful day was just like one of those that's just like let's write a song about somebody just having an awesome day you know what i mean it's not necessarily about love it could be about love but it's not necessarily about love um and i think that i'm kind of approaching it like in that way now um obviously i love writing about my wife and now beautiful she is and all that stuff and hence love me with the lights on and the video of that that single and everything um so i definitely approach things di differently because i mean i don't want to write anything that doesn't feel genuine right and the, the the audience knows that and that's what happened with me in 2015. you know i let people 
I let people influence the music I was making. And then when it went, when it didn't go the way they wanted it to, it was my fault, you know? And that's kind of what happened back in that time and why I stopped doing everything. Sounds sounds more like you're sort of following your intuition this time around and what feels- 100%. Hundred percent. I tell I tell everybody I work with, if it doesn't feel right, I'm not doing it, guys. There you go. It's all about what feels yeah. right. It's all about the energy. Yeah. It's all about the vibes and and sort of doing doing what's right for you and what what feels right. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I love to hear that. And speaking of your kids, Sienna, who you just mentioned is nine. You were I want to say nine years old when you first broke out making Portuguese. That was her age. Yes. Yeah. Are any of your kids sort of showing signs of musicality? Do they want to sort of break out in in the business, following dad's footsteps? Well, if you. There's a video on my tick on my TikTok and Instagram that I posted where I, I got Sienna to rank like her favorite five Sean Desmond songs. Right. If you listen to if you watch it till the end, she sings. So my daughter can sing. Mm-hmm. So I was with my uh like voice specialist today, asking him like if he knew anybody that's like good for like a singing teacher for kids. Right. Because she really wants to do it. I'm not gonna force her to do it, but she's on me about doing it and she actually can sing. That's amazing. If yeah. listen, if she's got the talent, she has the support. Why not? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's 100%. amazing. I'll do what my parents did for me. You know. It's beautiful. Yeah. Any any possibility of a, a non English album? I know you're of Portuguese Italian descent. And can, it, should we expect any sort of Portuguese music in the future of of, of today? Um, I can't say too much about it okay. in this moment. Okay. But there is a certain female Portuguese Canadian artist who I am going to be in the studio with this weekend does, and we are going to try to cook something up. Does their name by any chance rhyme with jelly? <laughs> <laughs> this is, 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 is. Maybe, say, maybe not. Say, that's fair. I that's don't fair. Know. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, that's that's huge. It's super exciting. Um, my last question, a little bit unrelated to the tour, but I I, I want to ask you: At what point did we stop calling Toronto T dot and calling it the Six? The Six? Yes. I think when Drake went ahead and, and rebranded it, man, that's what happens. OGs know know the T dot. See? This new gen, this new gen, they know the six. They know the six. Sean, yeah. this was this was such a pleasure. I cannot thank you enough for chatting with me. Oh my god! I am going to be at your show next week uh, at Club I love it. in Montreal. I'm looking forward to see you back on stage again. 100. Any final words, last things you'd like to get out? Honestly, just like thank you again. Like I said in the beginning of the interview, I feel like I don't deserve all this love and everything that's happening to me, but. You know, everything happens for a reason. Timing is everything. I really believe that, you know, there's always an upside to even shitty things that happen. You know what I mean? Um, so just thank you to the fans. Thank you to people like you who believe and who want to be a part of my genu- sorry, journey that's continuing. Um, so just thank you. And I love you guys. Words. Listen, you deserve it. And then some, Sean, I hope you have the best day. Thank you, man. I appreciate right, take it. Take care, eh? Good luck on the tour. Was- thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Of course. Anytime. Really All looking right. forward to it. Take Love care. Bye. Take care, man. Bye.